I have to do some light surgery on my battery bank. Now some people are going to criticize me here for what I'm about to say, but please understand when you build something on a low budget, you use what you have and you do the best you can with what you have. And sometimes it's not perfect. Sometimes it's not the best setup but you use what you have. When I put this together you guys will remember the metal bus bar that I used which seems to be working fine. That was alright. But one thing I did not do properly which I know I should have done better is the all the power is going in on this end and all the power is going out on this end. And I need to extend the power from opposite end so I have to have negative over here going in and positive at this end going in and then negative here going coming out to the inverter and positive over here coming out to the inverter to draw equally on the battery bank and that's what I'm about to do see I think that I ran out of power last night I think that is because I'm only drawing off this end and with the resistance of the bus bars, because they're not proper bus bars, I am probably using these two batteries more than the rest. So I'm going to change these out right now and see if my theory is right. And if so, that will definitely prove that it is important to have those terminals hooked up like that. So we'll find out here. Here's an example of humidity. It's 83% out and 88 in. I am not moving and I am dripping with sweat. I know it's a really beautiful sound, isn't it? But it's really, really humid. The humidity is just disgusting. Uh, sure hope that changes or I won't get much done because when you sweat this bad, not moving, I am. Um, it's dangerous to work because you're sweating just so much and the unfortunate thing about that is water makes you a conductor sweat is salty it makes you a conductor <laughs> I just got a zap I um, made myself a conductor on the battery banks normally the your skin is a good, good resistor and you don't get zapped but when you're sweating as bad as I am today I found out that I was a very good conductor and got a bit of a zap. So I have to be really careful working in here right now. Which makes things even more complicated. So anyway, I've got the the MPPT charge controller hooked back up. I had disconnected the solar panels first. Always disconnect your solar panels first when working on your battery bank. Or you will blow up your charge controller. So I disconnected the solar panels coming in. Then I disconnected the charge controller positive from the battery terminals over here. And I extended it down to here. The white wire coming on. I did not have to go to the far end of the bus bar. I went to the right behind the last battery. So that it that battery is going to take a charge all the time. So now this battery is going to always get a full charge. Because the negative terminal comes in here from the charge controller and the positive terminal comes in here so they're connected at opposite ends of the battery bank so now the whole battery bank is connected to the charge controller now the interesting thing is though I did not notice a difference in voltage when I reconnected that it's 12.1 volts which is what it was before so I'm guessing that the current going into the system might not have been influenced as much as the current going out into the power inverter which I currently have off because I'm about to exp extend the wires on the power inverter as well I found some leftover jumper cable wires I was scrounging around and found some leftover from back when I did this whole system last year and it's just enough where are they it was just the ends left over here and a little bit of wire and it's just enough for me to extend this and there was one piece left with the terminal on it 
from, I don't remember, something probably under the hood or something when I was working one time. So I'm going to double up the black and that's going on the power inverter. And then I'll reconnect this and hopefully, if my theory is correct, I was only drawing off the front set of batteries most of the current. They probably equalized in the night through the bus bar or when it wasn't being used, but I, I, I don't think I was getting the full capacity out of this when the fridge was running. So, find out if I'm right today. I'm going to try to show you what I do here, but it's very crowded workspace, so I don't know if you'll see much. I actually am crawling underneath my table. When I set this up, I didn't have the table here, and it was nice and easy to work in, this area. But now with the table, it's awkward because I'm underneath my table. It's very awkward. So now I want to take the negative from my power inverter and take that off and extend that one. It's a double wire because so if you remember those of you who were with me when I hooked this inverter up last year I had to double up the wires to even get the inverter to, to power. It was my laser printer I was working on last year which runs fine now but I had to double up the wires. I can't afford a zero gauge wire so what I have here is two I think these are two gauge wires together I don't know if you can see that in my hand here there's two two gauge wires I think they're two and now what I'm going to do is take two more that I just made and add them on here it's going to be a massive cable and that will give my inverter the current that it needs to power my devices properly. That's my extension. So I took the last of my jumper cable that I had last year and made two more wires. It's going to go down to the end of the battery bank, hopefully. It's going to reach, I hope. And I'll be using a serious amount of electrical tape on this junction. Wish I could make that flat. I have locking washers on these, on every one of my bolts for safety. Now this is going to get a serious amount of electrical tape on it. And now my power inverter is happily on again, or my power inverter, my uh, charge controller is happily running again and the solar panels are pumping current into the battery bank right now so that's a good thing that's all connected and back up and running properly I had to get out this really early in the morning right away before the Sun hits the solar panels fully or I was going to have way too much current be working on this. You do not want to be working on your solar panels when there's a lot of current. It will melt wires when you're trying to work on it. That's dangerous. This wire here can have as much as 100 amps going through it on average so I am going to make sure it's very well secured with electrical tape so it never shorts out on anything but it's also going to be laying at the bottom of my battery bank so there won't be anything to short out against 
also a safety measure. But it's better to be extra safe than sorry and have an explosion or fire in your place. So now I'm going to tape the other end of this while I run this through because the charge controller can give you a bit of a zap if you're not careful. And as I said, I'm sweating pretty bad right now from the humidity. So now I just have to run this down and through. That's funny, once you start out, you have a clean empty box and there's no wires and it looks really good and neat. And you get working after a while, it builds up and you start getting a whole mess of wires. It just keeps going and going and building up with time. See, I'm running this down underneath everything through my battery bank, my battery box here. So that wire is laying on the ground underneath the battery bank. Let me see if I can change my camera view to show you where I am. It's an awkward situation where I'm under the table here. Okay, now, do you see where I'm? Right here, yes. Alright, I'm at the end of the battery bank now. So, let me see, I'm checking with my finger. Yeah, there. Okay, I'm going to be working right here. Here's my wire. Crawl under the table and get my tools. Hopefully, I really hope this is going to improve my power situation here. What's convenient is I keep all my extra parts right in this battery box off to the side. All my spare nuts and bolts and washers for working on the battery box is in a bag here. Okay. Oops, sorry about that. It is awkward. Now, these have to go right here. It's going to snap most likely. I hate when that inverter snaps. Yes! Oh, I hate that. There's nothing you can do with the inverters. I've never seen an inverter that didn't snap like that when you first touch it. Inverter's off, or everything's off. Sure, I could use another on-off switch box, but the inverter has its own switch. It's be sort of redundancy just for the inverter. Really, I shouldn't be disconnecting that thing very often. I have to be careful not to touch the positive thermo with my arm because I'm conducting now due to the humidity. I don't want to become a human firework on video. Well, there it is. There's the negative of the inverter. There's the positive of the charge controller. So now they're on opposite terminals. 
And then down here we've got opposite. We've got the inverter over here and the charge controller over there. So I'm going to fire up the inverter and see how this runs today. Well, my battery bank is charging up, sitting at 13 volts, taking in 400 watts. The sun is not yet directly over the solar panels, so I think my batteries will top off nicely today. It's full sunny, not a cloud in the sky now, so... And the batteries are at 80 degrees, 76 degrees, that's hot. Ugh. Now we're getting on... Now the problem is... My battery bank is getting on the high side of the temperature where it starts to lose capacity again. Batteries, my batteries are no good under 50 degrees and they start to lose capacity around high 70s to 80 degrees. Batteries start to lose their capacity. So, huh, got to get those batteries cooled down. That's the thing to deal with here but it's been hot. It has not been getting hot cooler in the evenings either. Now the light up here is yellow so that's the actual status of the batteries. Although it shows a 13 volt charge that's just because it's taken in voltage from the solar panels but oops 12.9 fridge must have just kicked in. Not sure. Oh a cloud went over. The wattage went down. Well anyway, that's the real status of the battery. Yellow means not good, danger. Last night I was down to 12.1 volts and I had to unplug the fridge. So my ice cream melted. I do have ice cream out here because it gets so hot it cools my body down. And it melted. So hopefully with the new wiring in here I'll be able to run that fridge more. We'll see how it goes in the next couple days. Poor inverter is running full out on the cooling fans. The fridge is running non-stop right now with all this heat. It's so hot that fridge is running just non-stop to try to keep things cold. And I had this opened up, my battery bank here, just so I can check the wire temperature. I wanted to be sure that it wasn't getting warm. This is the line to the inverter. And it's cool to the touch, that's good. Very good, because I was worried with this very long wire I just put in this morning that that might not be ha might not be strong enough or thick enough wire. I mean, for all the current being sucked through there, but it's all right. So I'm gonna be okay. <laughs>